Hi friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting. And today, this is like really cool and really fun and exciting because we get to see the long awaited, at least for me, Mac one from Martin, give you our thoughts, let you check it out and really see what this thing's made of so that you can see if it might be something you wanna add to your lighting through Learn Stage Lighting Gear by Above AVO. Let's dive in. Okay, so I'm going to start with the physical. We see both of these are on here. So what is the Mac 1? The Mac 1 in a nutshell is a really cool, really awesome wash slash beam fixture that is tiny. It's very fast. It's somewhat versatile. And it's one of the few wash type fixtures, honestly, out there that have a really good color quality to them. And so that's what it is. Let's take a look. So first things first, we've got them both on. They're just running their pixel map right now on the background. Over here, this one has a frost filter in it that comes with it, kind of a soft focus filter. Um, they have a different name for it. And it is a completely toolless installation. It took me a minute to figure this out, so I'm gonna walk you through it while we're here. Basically, there are two sides with little like teeth marks. They go with the little V on the cover. And then once you line up the, the V or the triangle on the cover with the little teeth mark, the other two fit in these non-teeth mark sides, and you're off to the races. It helps soften the light a little bit. But let's take a look at the physical while we get into this here. So we're just going to unplug this guy here. And so first and foremost, what you're going to see is this is a really, this is what's really cool about the Mac 1, is it is so small and so compact and so light. I mean, it's literally nine pounds. The base is smaller than a typical fixture. It's just really really small right like here we've got some of our favorites here learn stage lighting you know we've got the volux sysma z4 you know you can see the sysma through it the spectra even our doming rx this guy's smaller and, and definitely lighter than all of them there's very few that i can just do this freely with on the bottom this is really cool you have a typical omega bracket hanging for a typical kind of truss mount you know hanging below a truss but if you would need to take it this way and have it hanging vertically on a truss like this, um, that's not great for Omega clamps. In fact, it's really bad and kind of unsafe. What we have instead is we have two clamp mounts for M12 clamp bolts where you can put two clamps on there. Now you can hang it vertically. There also is a full set of accessories for hanging on the Mac one. There's a cage that kind of goes around them here that allows you to make grids with them. And then there's a four bar, which is just a bar, holds four of them, goes in the road case for them, hides the cables, and makes it so that you just, two people can pick up a bar, hang four lights, and you're done, and it's fast. Okay, uh, let's talk about the base for a minute. So, on the base here, um, we have one, an LCD that you can get to. Even when the fixture's powered off, it just lit up a little bit there. In terms of the lettering on it, when we power it up here in a second, um, you might see it a little better. It's, it's very simple, honestly. You know, I... Some of these manufacturers have started to put man menus that look really fancy. I really don't care. It's high contrast. It's easy to see things. It's easy to get to. Everything's accessible via RDM. Anyways, it uses very little power, two amps max, as a matter of fact. And it's just so small and lightweight. So let's talk about this fixture. Let's start to explore it a little bit. So this one's on already. We're gonna turn our other friend on here. So we'll grab power and data. Connect them up. So on connection to power, of course, like any moving light, it's gonna reset. Just gonna show you here the display brightness. Compared to the studio, the lights here in our studio, it's really a very bright fixture. And now it's gonna do its homing and get into place, okay? Um, so as I mentioned, um, the core of this is an LED engine uh, with a wattage that will flash on the screen. And it is a red, green, blue lime LED engine, okay, for really high color quality. Lime does great at that. Okay, you can see it homed, it came into place really well, cycled through everything before it came on. Great reset behavior. Okay, so in terms of the light output engine, which we don't have on right now, so let's go ahead and turn it on. Okay, it's pretty darn bright. It looks really nice, as you can see from the side here okay, as well as from the front. We've got this one that has that frosted filter on it, this one that doesn't. 
When I look at the lens here, we are at, what zoom are we at? We're in the middle, so we're just going to go, let's pop to narrow zoom quick. I mean, look at that. Wide zoom, narrow zoom. Did you see that? So that is the one, one of the many things about this fixture that's just nuts. And it's one of those things when you get a Martin Mac fixture, yes, it's going to cost more than other fixtures for sure. But the engineering that goes into these things is just better. They last a really long time typically. They have parts available for a really long time, etc. So it's a really good buy for the long term. It's going to be more expensive than other fixtures, yes. But I mean, this, like, nobody else, no other fixture does the whole zoom range that fast that I know of, and not that quietly. I mean, I could barely hear it. You guys might not have through the camera. Um, in terms of what I can see right now, just to describe it a little bit is I've got this kind of cyan blue pixel map happening on the LEDs. Now, the backlight LEDs on this fixture are just a ring around the outside that cross shoot kind of into this front Fresnel lens. Okay, a Fresnel lens is a stippled uh, lens from, they come from lighthouses and it's, it's really quite soft. And the light catches it and it's really cool. So there's only LEDs around the edge for that edge, for that lighting in the lens. And that's what you're seeing there. Then there's the output. Okay, in terms of control, Martin fixtures, a lot of them just use RGB for the color control. And if you think about it, if you've ever gone ahead and you've been controlling, you know, like a lot of those hex pars that a lot of brands have, uh, where it's red, green, blue, white, amber, and UV, you end up, you know, mixing colors kind of becomes laborious. And a lot of times you just honestly don't touch the extra emitters, don't touch, you know, the, the lime, the amber, etc., cetera, um, and the UV. And then what's the point of having them? if you don't touch them, right? So Martin does it a little bit differently and uh, it's warming up on these significantly. They just give you red, green, and blue because if you think about it, for additive colors, um, which is what you know an LED color mixing engine gives you, you can hit every color in the spectrum with just red, green, and blue or pretty much every color. And so the fixture itself then translates it to the red, green, blue line to give you the optimal mix. They're not the only ones who do this, but I think it's a really good setup. So let's take a look here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull it full white. Um, there's a couple things you're going to notice as we look at these. One, it's pretty darn bright. I mean, yes, it's narrow, but you know, it's keeping up with a Volex Spectra 300 right here that has a prism in it, right? And it's killing it. Um, same here. In terms of color quality, these look really nice. With Martin fixtures, another thing, and I've always liked this back since like the Aura, is you have a color temperature control channel that I just took up to hit about the native white of this camera where we're, we're balanced at. And the cool thing about Martin fixtures is you go and you adjust that color temperature channel, it's smooth the whole way around. It never steps. So all the way down to 2000K will go to like 3200, a nice warm white, all calibrated. Every fixture is going to match, looks really good. But then if you're in colors, like you're doing a show where you're both in whites and colors and you've set a color temperature, there's no snap out of the color temperature presets into regular color or anything like that. It's just that, for example, if I go to magenta here, as I change the color temperature control channel, it's actually going to shift that color. So like I'm going to go up, you can see it's getting, it's getting more pinkish. Then we go back all the way down, right? It gets more reddish. And that's, you know, that's typical. It's really neat how that works. And Martin's kind of always done it that way. And a lot of other companies have not done it that way historically. And it's always kind of annoyed me because if you need to go to a preset color temperature on a show, but then you also need to do colors, you either have to black out to let go of that macro channel because it just snaps between a macro and a color mix, between a color temp preset and a mix. Martin gets it right. What else are we looking at? Let's look at the lens again. Okay, so the lens is really stinking cool. I think you can see that here. Let me go grab another piece of media. Of course, here on the channel, we're controlling this with Onyx and with the Dialos Pixel Mapper because we love it. Um, here's a nice red white. So we've turned off the source, the emitter, and we're just looking at these again. Frost lens that comes with it, wide open. So soft focus, wide open, and it's really stinking cool. You can see, you know, the LEDs just dancing around. Um, it's gonna change as you zoom. So for example here, if we go ahead to, we're at narrow, we go to wide, it's gonna look different. 
So like most LED fixtures, when you go wide, the lens is closest to the LEDs themselves. Meaning that the effect of these animation type things is the boldest. Not only that, especially, I mean, I can see it in both. You kind of, when it's closer to the LEDs, you almost get like a tunnel effect where it kind of looks like a tunnel of light, whereas uh, when you're in narrow, it's a little more even and a little more um, consistent across the lens, okay? Neither are right or wrong, they're just both different looks and things to have in your arsenal when you use this fixture in your show, okay? What's next? Oh my goodness, speed. So, as I mentioned before, the zoom speed is nuts. Um, there's a number of macros on the zoom channel, such as this. Let me turn it back on, actually. So I'm going to tell you, if I had other wash fixtures, pretty much any other moving head wash, many that we reviewed, many that we like on this channel, and I was zooming them this fast on their zoom channel, two things would happen. One is it would be very loud. These honestly are not that loud. Um, you, you probably hear it in the mic, but it's really not bad. Number two is, as you can see, it's able to zoom and do so very quickly and accurately going back and forth and it hits the end and it goes right back and it hits the end and it goes right back there's no slow down and speed back up or anything like that so it's you know really great um, in that regard let's go ahead and uh, stop that stop the madness let's look at movement speed on it because that's another thing anytime you have a fixture that's really lightweight you're typically going to have pretty good movement speed um, this just really sets a bar because it moves very fast and it can stop on a dime, right? So if I go ahead to my pan tilt here and we'll just bring in an effect. Pull it back a little. I mean, this fixture is moving very, very quickly. They're staying in sync very well. You can see I have my bases not quite lined up. There we go. They're staying in sync excellently. And if I go into blind mode, look at that. Look at how quick, how quietly, how smoothly they come to a stop like that. So that's something that's really nuts about this fixture. Uh, again, it's just showing you kind of that Martin Mack testament to quality where they really do engineer these things well. Yes, you pay a little more, but there's a lot in it. Ultimately, the question we always try to ask here on Learn Stage Lighting Gear and, and above AVL and in our videos is like, what is this fixture good for? You know, the number one thing that Martin kind of shows on a lot of their, their press and promo is they're using it as a backlight, as an effect light, in grids, in multiples, etc. It totally is good for that. But I think for a lot of cases, it's a really good multifunctional light. Okay, um, I'm looking at this now and I'm going to spend a little more time in the photometrics and with a meter here. But the fact is, if I go ahead and dial in a color on the lens, okay, I dial in a nice white. Here I've got a really nice quality white. I'm going to go up a little in color temp. I like something just a little bit more neutral. It's, this is still obviously warmer than my camera, but you can see it's quite bright. And yes, it's a small fixture, but ultimately... You know, at this level, you can see, I mean, the light coming out of it looks really good. So we've got here like this white that's coming out of here as a front light. Um, at short to even medium ranges, I'm going to say, um, you know, maybe even up to 10, 15 feet. Um, check with us at Learn Stage Lighting Gear by Above AVL. Um, but it's a really nice white. I mean, the quality of it, just like the liveliness of my skin is so nice a lot of times you get into led fixtures and you may be able to technically make this color temperature but it's really kind of greenish or it almost looks ghastly this is not that i mean you can see here it's obviously like blowing way past the brightness of my studio light and so i'm just going to go ahead and start pulling it down and i pull it down and you can see by the time i finally expose it right you know, it's not a perfect science, but I mean, we're down at, what are we at? 22%. 
where we're finally exposed kind of right. Our color temperature is lower than the camera set for, so just a second there. I think we'll go to like 6,000K. And you can see, wow, it's like a really nice white. We'll pull it down a little bit here in terms of tilt. And you can see, okay, it's lighting me. It, it looks really nice. It's exposed quite nicely. I mean, it's coming at me from straight on, so it's a little blinding. But you can see how it's a multi-use type fixture, how it's not just an effect slash beam type fixture, but, you know, at... If I'm here at, you know, five feet away and I'm running at 20% and I've got plenty of light, that tells me at, you know, at 10 feet away, I'm probably going to be able to run it at about, you know, 60% at full, uh, maybe up to about 15 feet away and still have a pretty nice, a really nice front light out of it. So you can use it for smaller things, for more tight up front front lights, um, even for a band at the front corners of the stage and you want something that's just gonna be narrow. A lot of times the metal people do that. Um, I think these look really nice in that. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this quick look at the Martin Mac one. Uh, we have it at Learn Stage Lighting Gear by Above AVL and we would love to help you guys figure out if that's what you need or not. It's what we do every day. We take a look at fixtures like this. We try to get the best info we can out to you and help you find what's gonna fit for you. The Mac one is just a real winner in my book. It's not for everyone, but when you look at the weight, the size, the, the quality of the speed of the light and the speed of the movement, the speed of the zoom, just everything all together, it's a really great kind of effects slash wash multi-use fixture that can really do a lot because it has really high color quality, really good colors. You can go light set pieces with this thing, um, you know, use it as a backlight, use it as a front light on really small gigs. Um, and of course the pixel mapping, the ability to have all those different pixels behind it that you're able to control is really cool. I've got these in the ludicrous mode. Um, it's nice because it's not as many pixels as if you had the whole lens filled in, um, but it's enough to make stuff really cool. So you're not using tons and tons and tons of DMX channels and spending more time programming um, and setting them up. Um, but at the same time, you still get a really good look. So I think it's a really good combo. I think Martin's really coming back and they've made not only this fixture, but some other new fixtures like the Mac Viper XIP that are, you know, getting back to where they were back before some things happened. And, and uh, they're really getting to the place where they're putting out really cool fixtures again, and we're proud to be a dealer for them. So if we can help you with anything, Martin, anything else, we love to help. We would love to answer any questions you have and help you find the right fit for your needs and help you get it over at Learn Stage Lighting Gear by Above AVL. Check us out, add stuff to your cart, request a quote, and feel free to contact us about anything. It's always worth getting a quote, even if it looks like a fixture's out of your league. Let us help you. Let us talk about your space, figure out what you need, and be able to help you. You'll see testimonials on our front page now. We finally got those up um, because we want to have the most satisfied customers in the world, and we want to have you. So let's do it. We'll see you guys there. Thanks.